Kaylin here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And I've got a lot for you in this video. I'm going to try to fit a lot in. Uh, first thing is Chris and I are getting a pot roast in the oven. Uh, we decided we wanted to have pot roast for dinner. And so I have me a chuck roast here. You can see this. And it is quarter pounds, almost a three pound piece of meat. And uh, Chris is over here cutting up russet potatoes, onions, and then I have a little bag of carrots here too. And the way we put this together, it is so simple. It is not even, I am not even kidding you, you guys. I'm gonna sear this meat first. And then I'm gonna take four packages of brown gravy, McCormick's brown gravy mix, and I'm gonna mix it in to about four and a half cups of water. I've added a, about an extra half a cup extra. Usually this is one package to one cup equals, you know, a cup of gravy. And I'm gonna mix all this up in the water and I'm simply gonna pour that all over the meat that I'll add into the carrots, potatoes and onions. And we're gonna put it in the oven at 350 and we're gonna cook it for about two and a half, three hours. And while that's cooking, we, Chris and I are gonna work on putting the garland up on the up on my big hutch. And I may do a couple of things inside the hutch. I'm not doing a lot in there. But then I have questions. I had a lot of questions come through on my video that I uh, put up yesterday. So I'm gonna go through those and answer some questions. So we've got a lot to do. So I don't wanna stand here and yammer on too much here because I'm sure when I answer the questions, I'll be yammering enough for all of us. So I'm gonna get this uh, roast in this pan and I'm gonna start searing. And I'll probably put us into fast motion here a lot until we get this in the oven. Okay, I put about a couple teaspoons of butter in this pan and I let it melt. And then I just put salt and pepper On it and this is all the salt and pepper I will put into this I don't add more but I do do it when I sear it on each side by the way my husband is one of the best cooks you would ever want to know he is a jack-of-all-trades and uh, an awesome awesome cook this is honestly the easiest pot roast you will ever make and it tastes good every time I always use McCormick's, you guys. So let me flip this meat over real quick. Here we are with the roaster, and you can see that Chris has got potatoes and onions all the way around the exterior, and he's left me a hole for the roast to go in. So I'm gonna put this roast right in here, and now he's gonna pour the carrots on. All right, so that's it for everything, all the meat, potatoes, onions, and carrots that goes in. I'm going to get my four and a half cups of water and four packages of McCormick's brown gravy mix. We're just going to pour this all over the top. Doesn't have to cover everything. It's okay because we're going to put a lid on it. This baking pan is ancient. You guys have had this forever and a day. So I bet you I can find one on Amazon. I'll try to find one and link it in my kitchen idea list. But anyway, all I do now is put the lid on and it goes in the oven 350 for two and a half to three hours at least. And when we bring it out, it's going to be, we're going to be able to take two forks and we're going to be able to pull that meat right, right apart. 
I don't know whether I will show you the finished product of this. Maybe when we take it out of the oven, I will try to remember to, you know, unveil with the lid going off and video that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is going in the oven now. And then we're going to head out to the dining room and do a little work out there. And here we go. Meet you in the dining room. Chris and I are, ooh, look at me, I'm all red faced and running up and down the steps. Uh, excuse me, we are working on putting the dining room garland up. As you can see, it is a green pine garland and I've wrapped a silver ornament garland in it and I got the ornament garland at Walmart a few years ago. I don't know whether you'll be able to find the ornament garland, you guys. I'm so sorry. I did see some in Ross, though. I will say that. I did see some there. And uh, uh, and I made the big round bows years and years and years ago. So they are so glittery. I took them outside to fluff them a little bit. So, but anyway, I'm going to let this play a little bit and uh, Hopefully it's gonna light up and then we're gonna work on putting some Christmas trees, silver Christmas trees and whatnot up on top there. I'm hoping I'm able to leave my plates, so we'll see. So I'm just gonna let it play. I'll do a little something blingy right here. Five of these poinsettias. They don't look the best here, but just as a background. And then I have three bags back here that I used in here last year. Did you get that side? Move out of the way here. Nope, he's going back up on the ladder. Oh, I had these little blingy things put just over here and kind of just spreading out. Plug this puppy in. Let me get these straightened here first. You would think after all these years that I've used these bows that they would stop crying glitter. <laughs> but they have not. Okie dokie, everybody. Oh, we're having a fight here. So, not us. We're not having a fight. We are fighting with this you See that little Christmas tree up there peeking up behind the plate? Well, that plate stand takes up a ton of room on top of the hutch. So, I told Chris, I said, can you just stick it on the top? There's a little finial that sticks up out of the plate hanger holder. And I said, can't you just <laughs> muscle the, the little tier of the Christmas tree down on top of it. And he looks at me like I've lost my mind, y'all. He, he went, R, really? And I said, just try it. He's the engineer, but I'm the domestic engineer, y'all. And there are times when I know things, sometimes, better than he might. <laughs> He's standing here laughing at me. Anyway, he did what I asked, and it's, it's sticking, it's fine. It's right there. And that, so that Christmas tree is, that's a little top of a Christmas tree. It looks fine. It actually looks pretty in person. So you're just gonna be able to see the top of that little Christmas tree. And I'm gonna place the other four here. I've pushed my blue plates out or back and kind of tilted them a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and put these trees back up. Or up. We're gonna go ahead and put these up. This one's gonna go right in that corner. And I want to be able to still see the, oh, I'm so sorry, honey, goodness gracious. Uh, I want to still be able to see the plates and the lantern, but I just want these to be a, you know, a nod to a Christmas tree. You know, y'all are going to know it's a Christmas tree, but you might not be able to see the entire thing. So, same thing on this side. Again, I'm nothing if I'm not symmetrical.
Chris is going to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down and direction. Good. Got a thumbs up. Woohoo! Okay, and that's going to be it for the top of this one, you guys. All right? So. Okay. As you saw me a little while ago, I put just one blingy little uh, piece of garland over on that one side. And I do want to do the same thing over on this side. I really don't have much in here, you guys. And goodness knows this year I couldn't find any blue. So we're going to go with like a tealy color inside, which is really pretty. And this is kind of blingy and it catches the light in here. So it makes it really pretty anyway. Just give us a touch of the color. I've got more glitter than Carter has pills, y'all. Okay, I did buy three of these little Christmas trees today. One in the middle on the top and then two kind of just snugged back in there. Okay. Now, a little snow coney kind of thing here. And got a couple of blingy florals. I think I'm going to put that there. And just, this is just some leafy kind of stuff this is so old you guys i don't even know whether i'll be able to straighten it out to look like anything <laughs> it's a point blingy poinsettia i wish i could find some of these something like this in blue though okie dokie everybody i am back how in the world are you guys doing since i last saw you like a second ago <laughs> For me, it's been a couple of hours. I've spent the last hour or so on the phone with my cousin Stacy, who I adore, and she thanks you all so much for making your order from her. Uh, as far as your little ornaments were concerned, thank you for those of you who ordered from her. She says you guys are all so sweet, and I said, I told you, and she knows that, you know. <laughs> Excuse my eyes, I've had, i uh, it's been glitter city here with these bows as you guys saw earlier. And I think I got some in my eyes and my eyes are looking all red and irritated. So I'm really sorry about that. Um, that's the only thing that I can think of because I was rubbing them a little bit when I was on the phone with Stace and they were really tearing up and bothering me. So anyway. Just wanted to, you know, talk about that. And it, it's been a day. It's been a day. I can smell my pot roast. It's about ready to come out of the oven. I'm telling you. Ah, oh, it smells delicious. So, but I did want to go ahead and do these questions today. I did finish up inside my hutch. And I'll take a video of everything up close, you know, and show you everything that I did. I didn't do anything else but just stick a stick a flower in the little vase there and stick a couple of flowers over here and stick a couple of things on the top shelf. I didn't do much, as you guys saw. I was, uh, you know making a hot mess of it is what I was doing. But I did, while I was talking to Stacy, I was able to get, you know, get that finished. So I did do that. So now I've, I've, I've planted myself here and I'm going to answer one, two, three, four questions, five questions maybe, but one's very short. And uh, I am going to make a couple of funky bows for you here. We're going to do a couple of very quick tutorials. Uh, one of the questions is about if she can make a funky bow out of a narrower ribbon. So I've got two different funky bows. One that I'm going to try to do out of this ribbon. I've never really tried it before. This is just three-eighths of an inch ribbon. And I've got three different colors here. And it's not wired. So I'm not sure what it's going to look like. But then I do have some three uh, prettier, one, two and a half inch, one, one and a half inch, and one, one inch that we're going to do too. So stick around for that here. I don't know which question it is, but it's coming up. So anyway, let's get started. I've, I've copy and pasted your questions into my stickies here. It's just one of those days, y'all. Y'all know you turn left and you needed to go right. You turn right and you needed to go left. You look up and you needed to look down. It's just been one of those kind of days for me, you know. And I told Chris, I said, I'm bound and determined to get this video done, though. I am going to get this done today. So let's get started here. 
Okay, uh, number one is from Sherry A. And she's asking me about the external batteries. If y'all remember in my uh, kitchen table lantern video that Chris gave a little bit of a tutorial there about how to use an external battery, you know, and how to rig up your battery packs and so on. And so she asked, she said, if I wanted to do this to my fairy lights in different locations, I would need an external battery at each, would I need an, an external battery at each location? How much are they? And how long does it last before needing recharged? So I wrote her back here, and I'm just gonna read you what I wrote her. And I just thought some of you might be interested in knowing about this. And Chris was kind of talking me through this too. So I said, Sherry, they sell USB converter plugs. They're like little plugs. Any of you who have Apple products probably know what I'm talking about. Is they and, and anybody who has products that you have to, you know, plug in something into the electric wallet and, and then have some way to plug a USB cable into, you know, little adapter. Um, so that's what I'm talking about, USB converter plugs. So if you rigged up your candle and you were near an electrical outlet, you could just plug it into the USB converter plug and then plug it into the wall. If you're not near an outlet, then yes, you'll need an external battery. Mine usually lasts upward of 48 hours, depending on what I have plugged in before needing to unplug it and recharge it. Regarding the cost of one, it depends on the size. For fairy lights, you would need a 5,000 to 10,000 milliamp hour, M-A-H, milli, excuse me, milliamp hour, M. A H. Also, they come in different different physical sizes, which may be important depending on whether you want to hide it. So be mindful of its literal size, meaning when you pick it up to hold it. Like right now, and I forgot to tell you in that video, I've got that little external battery, and you all saw the size of that. It was about that big. I've got it snugged underneath one of the end lanterns. The lanterns had, you know, were kind of welled out underneath. So I just slid it underneath the lantern, you know. Uh, we hid mine under one of the lanterns. This one, this is what this one is similar to the one that I used. I will also link this in my Amazon storefront in the electronics idea list. So, and this one cost $13.99. So they're not really expensive. The larger milliamps they have, though, the you know, the more expensive they're going to be. You know, so um, also too, Chris wanted me to mention, uh, he said. These power banks, he calls them a power bank, are meant to be used as a phone charger to stick in your purse or such. We use larger ones on our trips to keep in our carry-on bags and to utilize as at our seats in airports so we don't have to go to the charging stations, you know, or even on the plane if the plane seats don't have power, you know. We'll have, we, I always have that with me because I need to be, have a way to charge my phone at all times, y'all. As much as I do online, I, I have to have my phone. Charged. We utilize external batteries all the time for many different things. So I just wanted to kind of give you that explanation. Hopefully. So if you are interested in finding these external battery packs, it's called an Aukley, A-U-K-E-Y, USB-C power bank. And he's, Chris is right, that's a power bank. And you can find it linked in my electronics idea list in my Amazon storefront, which is always linked in the description. Okay, so I kind of wanted to give that explanation in person because Chris was explaining it with milli, milliamps and all that stuff. And I'm not up on all that stuff, y'all, but maybe some of your husbands will be and or you guys will be. Goodness knows, you know, I know there are some lady engineers in our midst here. Liz over there at Traditions by the Season is an engineer and I'm sure she understood exactly what I was saying. I didn't understand what I was saying, but I bet you she did. <laughs> So anyway, I say, okay, so I'm going to go move on from that, from that question now because I don't want to get y'all confused. <laughs> okay, uh, here we go with the next one. This is from Glorious77. I enjoyed seeing those Maryland photos. This is the one she was talking about when I showed Luke Hill, you know, where my grandparents lived right down the street from one another. I have to ask you, those two snowflakes that you bought at Walmart to decorate your bathroom, did the glitter shed everywhere? I bought one from there last year, and unfortunately, it made quite a mess. I was wondering if they had improved that this year. I did not notice that they they cried the glitter, Glorious. Honest to Pete, I don't. 
That doesn't mean that they didn't, though, in your house. I mean, you know, I, I, I pretty much keep a vacuum attached to my hip when I'm decorating, and I go behind myself and vacuum. And But once they're up, they did not shed glitter. I will say that. While I'm handling them and while I'm putting them into place, yeah, they cried a little glitter for sure while I was manhandling them. But once I got them hung, and in place, and the, other and the two that I got last year, I hang in my living room bay window on either side of the white Christmas tree. And I don't remember them, you know, crying glitter either. That's not to say that they didn't, uh, but I don't remember them doing that. But I vacuumed up, and once I have them hung, I leave them alone. So they don't, if they're just hanging there, you know, so. But you could try them again, or, you know, I, you know, I hope they don't for you. <laughs> okay, or Lynn, uh, there's the next one. And you know what? I didn't even put the name of this little sweet lady. I am so, oh, Maria, Maria, Maria. Uh, Maria asks, uh, what is the name and color of your lipstick? In that particular video, Maria, I was wearing Cherry Pop. And this is my Clinique. And this is the same lipstick that I wear. Every, well, I wear Pop from Clinique. I don't wear any other kind of lipstick usually. I just, I, I really love this lipstick. It stays put. Uh, this is not Cherry Pop. This is uh, Raspberry Pop. What I have on right now is Raspberry Pop. But here's the Cherry Pop. That one, I had a red sweater on that day. And so this is the color that I had on that day. Isn't that pretty? It is a true red. You know, and I never thought I would see the day that I wore red lipstick, y'all. Honest to Pete, I used to put red lipstick on when I was a teenager and go, oh, what are you doing? Don't wear that. That's too bright. But I love me some pretty lipstick. So that was Cherry Pop from Clinique. And I'll leave you a link in the description. I left you a link, I think, under your question. And then the lipstick I have on today is Raspberry Pop. And you can tell, this is my favorite. I use it all the time, but that is the color that I have on today. And I love it. This is my, this is my go-to because I wear this with pretty much everything except for like bright red or bright pink. I will put a pretty pink on too. And I do have a pretty pink one. I didn't bring it in here, but you can tell my fingernails need done too. Sorry about that. I've been, been a little busy. <laughs> But there we go, Cherry Pop. Okay, here we go with Willie's mom. Her name is Donna. Hello again, sweetheart Lynn. What a beautiful tablescape. I have now made four funky bows. I struggled with the last one as the ribbon was a thicker material, but it did turn out well, I must say. Yay! I have a question. Can you do a tutorial making bows with more narrow ribbon? I have a lot of it and would like to that I would like to use, but for the life of me, I cannot make it into bows. I would appreciate the help. One of the comments, questions on the video was that you are a breath of fresh air. Yes, you are. I've said it before. You are like a bright light. You are a bright light in a sometimes dark place. You make me cry. Thank you so much for everything. I just want to add you are quite humorous. <laughs> you make me laugh a lot. Much love to you, Donna, Willie's mom. Well, thank you so much, Donna, for all those sweet words. Oh my goodness. You're so kind. You're so kind. Thank you so much. And, and people tell me I'm funny all the time. I don't know that I'm funny. I'm just like real, <laughs> you know, but yeah, you're not the first to tell me that I'm, I'm a little bit humorous. <laughs> uh, probably because I don't take myself too seriously honestly, and that's it. But, but anyway, I've got, this is what I was referring to. This is the question I was referring to. So I'm going to turn my camera here and we're going to try to make two quick, they're only going to be nine loop and I've already got the ribbon cut. So we're just going to go through it real quick and I might speed through, you know, but I want to get us started on these two and you can see the end result. And so let's do that. Let me get my camera situated. I'm going to get a little drink of tea. I'll be right back and we'll make these couple of bows real lickety split. Okie dokie, everybody. My camera is, uh, I can't put my camera back as far as I normally do because I'm at a different table here and not on the side of the table. So, but we'll just go wing it this way. 
Okay, as you can see here, I have, this is the type of ribbon that I bought. I bought three little bolts of this ribbon, three little rolls of this ribbon. It's Celebrate It from Michaels, and it's only three eighths of an inch thick, and it is not wired. So we're gonna see how this goes. I have got three, I've got gold, I've got silver, and I've got a burgundy red, or a very deep red here. And I only cut these strips at 15 inches long. That's how long I cut them. So we, all right, y'all, I'm take. I just took a bow apart because I made the, the loops four inches and it just looked terrible. It looks terrible. So I'm going to try to make this again, only having the loops at three inches. We're gonna make them three inches because they did nothing. You couldn't even tell that there were different colors in it. So I'm gonna make them, the, the loops really little, like three inches. And if we need to cut the tails, we can. But I really, this, unless it's wired, it's not gonna work out very well for you. I'm gonna go to three inches. And we're gonna change directions every time. I'm telling you, I'm not even gonna worry about flipping that tail. I'm just gonna go to three and just change directions every time. That's a little better, but they're still not gonna stand up very well. See that, without them being wired. Start the pattern over again, switching directions every time. Picture of it? And stuff like that or not. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I'm just telling them that I'm not thrilled with this ribbon. It's little. And but if it was wired, it would be it would make a pretty pretty bow. But I don't know whether they sell wired like three eighths inch ribbon, which is what this is. But this, I did it with four inches. That looked terrible. So this looks a little better. But see, I can't fluff it, you guys. See, there's no fluffing this. Sure. So I don't know whether you meant for the loops to be this or for the for the ribbon that you have left over if it's this this narrow or if it's uh what i'm fixing to make for you i don't think that one works too well no doesn't look too pretty does it yeah that's all right though i mean you could put it on you know something but it's an experiment i would not do a funky bow like this I wouldn't make a bow, actually, and I've said this before, I wouldn't make a funky bow out of non-wired ribbon. It, my, my ribbon always has to be wired for sure. So, anyway, it's cute though. I mean, it's okay. It's not, I mean, you could put it on a package, I guess, huh? It looks, it looks pretty, pretty pitiful though. <laughs> not my best bow. So, anyway, I wouldn't use that. And that's right. As Chris says, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So that I would not use for a funky bow, this type of ribbon. We will go and see that roast here right when I'm done. And we'll walk over and see it uh, after my final words. So let me pull this ribbon up here now. This ribbon is actually Dee Stevens' ribbon that Bobby sent to me, bless her heart, as a gift. And I thought this might make a really pretty bow. And this is just one inch D. Stevens velvet ribbon. You can see the back of it is pretty there. So I'm going to use a one inch ribbon. I'm going to use a one and a half inch ribbon. And I'm going to use a two and a half inch ribbon. Okay. And we're going to make a nine loop funky bow out of this. And I'm not sure how to look, but we're going to see. All right, and this is, this is, 
I don't usually you make funky bows out of three different size ribbons, but you sure can. There's no reason why you can't. I need that back. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get started. Again, we're just gonna do a nine loop funky bow. Again, we just pick up the first piece and we're gonna work our way through the pattern. And we're gonna go to, let's do this at about five and a half inches. Pinch it together. Go to that back tail and twist. And there's our first loop. And see, this is all wired ribbon. We're gonna change directions every time we add a piece of ribbon into the bow. Actually, you know what? I want the gold in the middle. Isn't this pretty? This was just from, like, I don't know. This is... Where did I get this? It looks like maybe Craft Outlet or maybe Michael's, something like that. Woo, look at that. Okay, now we'll add the other one in. Into five and a half inches and add that in. So there you can see three different widths of ribbon to make a funky bow. So don't ever be, and this is by far the thickest and nicest is this D. Stevens ribbon. Put it up again or down this time. And turn. Gold. Five and a half. And pinching in, accordion it in at that place. And twist. And Five and a half inches and twist it. Two gold tails, I think. Let's we put some tails on this. I have no idea what I'm gonna use this for, but I'm gonna put two tails on it. Just fold it right in half and add it in. Me a gold pipe cleaner, put it over the top, grab it under your thumb, and try to find the center. Pull the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top, and use this hand as resistance. Pull your fingers around, squeeze, and twist. Twist, twist, twist. And as always, the most important part of any bow is the fluffing. So let me take a little time and I'm gonna fluff this bow out and we'll see what it looks like using three different widths of ribbon. hang this somewhere out in the other room and you guys will see this in my home tour somewhere. But this is a good example of three different widths of ribbon used to make a funky bow. And you could use all the same width, you can use three different widths, you can use Two the same and one narrow, or vice versa, two narrow and one large. You know, whatever you wanna do, the sky's the limit. But make sure the, the bottom line to this little experiment is you need to have wired ribbon into, in order to do a pretty funky bow, in my opinion. In my opinion, that is, I'm gonna turn one of these and make a little center for this bow. I think it'll be pretty. Since this is so thick and luscious and beautiful, and make a little center out of it. There we go. Love that gold. All right, I have one more question I need to answer, and uh, that'll be it for this video. But let me 
see if I can unglitter myself here. Okie dokie, you guys. The glitter war is real. I am telling you one thing. I didn't feel like the lighting was real great over there, so I wanted to hold this up for you again here. Might have just been the way I was looking at it, but that turned out pretty. I love that. It's a thick bow too. See, a funky bow is kind of a thick bow because of all the tails. And you can let the tails come up and through. You can also cut your tails. If you feel like you've cut your tails too long, don't ever be afraid to cut your tails down, you know, in a funky bow or in any bow. Don't cut them too short though. <laughs> all righty. Okay, let's see. I have one more. Oh, goodness gracious. One more question here. You guys, here we go with our last question. This one is from Gail Tucker. Harlan, the view from the garage kitchen area towards your staircase is simply stunning. Oh, thank you. I must have been like one of the pictures I was I was showing uh, of my table there, huh? You could see the distance, yeah. It looks homey, warm, welcoming, and so festive. And why wouldn't it? You are such a down-home spirit. Love your videos. Question, does it ever feel weird just talking to a camera phone? <laughs> you are at such an ease. It feels like sitting with you and having a cup of tea. See ya. <laughs> she always says that. See ya. To be honest with you, it, it, do, it doesn't seem weird to me at all anymore. I would say the first, for the first maybe year I was doing YouTube, at times it felt a little strange that I was kind of, you know, just talking into a camera. But when I'm looking at the camera, see, I'm not looking at myself. When I'm looking over here, I'm looking at myself. So when I'm looking at my little, now it has me a green light since my last update, my little green light, I know that I'm looking at you guys in the eyes. And I can feel you guys out there. I can, I can. And I can almost hear you saying, now, Erlen, what are you talking about? Or you you are crazy or whatever, you know. Or when I'm doing my, my decorate with me's or my, you know, I can hear your, oh, okay, she's going to put this here. Maybe she'll put that there. No, Erlen, don't do that. Don't put that there. <laughs> you know, but I, I've always been a very easy person to talk to. You know, I never meet a stranger you know, Chris will tell you that. And if I do, I'll, I will, and if somebody is maybe backward or a little bit shy with me, I will try to find the best thing to say to help them feel comfortable, you know, and make them feel better about whatever situation we happen to be in. I, I don't like people to be uncomfortable. I don't like them to be, um, and, and it, you know, feel angst of any sort, you know? So I, I've always, my whole life, I've been like this. Well, ever since I came out of my shell. When I was a young girl, I was as shy as the day is long. But when I came out of my shell after, I pretty much, right before I met Chris, you know, I, I was pretty shy for a very, very long time through school. You know, felt like the ugly duckling, felt like nobody would ever want to date me. I never felt like anybody would ever want to look at me. I never felt, you know, worthy enough. I never felt smart enough. I never felt pretty enough. I've always felt gawky and tall, overweight. And there were times I wasn't overweight, but you know, all, all of those old demons that come back and kind of get you, you know? And, uh, I let all that stuff go. Now, of course, some of that has come back to, to, to tap me on the shoulder since I've gotten on YouTube because there have been some comments that have talked about, you know, that, um, for instance, oh, she must have been the least popular girl in school. I got that one time. Well, I was not popular in school because my dad was the principal for one thing, so that didn't make me very popular, and he was a strict principal. And uh, because I was shy and quiet, you know, and comments like that would have devastated me, would have just devastated me. And, but you know what? I've learned that there are people out there who are very, very, very unhappy with themselves, I guess. And that's why they feel like they need to lash out and be so mean spirited toward me, about me, not to me, never said to me, but said about me, you know? So it's, it's, uh, you know, being on social media is a very, it can be a very daunting task. And the reason I keep doing it is for you guys and for myself too, of course, because it makes me feel good to help people. 
And people say to me, oh, you don't mean that. You don't mean that. You're, you're in it for whatever. Well, I don't know what else I wouldn't be in it, what I would be in it for, really and truly. Uh, but I do it because I like to help people, because it makes me feel better to help people, you know? And I, hopefully I have helped people. And uh, with what little crafting I know and what decorating I do, hopefully I've been able to help you guys. But, you know, and, and another thing, it only takes one person to say something. Those of you who have struggled with self-esteem or have, you know, have had problems like that in the past probably know this already. But I can have 5,000 people say how wonderful, uh, you know, I, uh, something looked. But that one person who says, oh, my goodness, what is, you know, that's the one that resonates, you know. So when you get the negativity at you like that, coming at you, especially personally, you know, about your hair or your makeup or your, you know, the way I, my weight or, you know, the way I dress or the way I decorate or the way, you know, and, and that ugliness comes to you. Sure, we put ourselves, those of us on YouTube put ourselves out there. We put ourselves out there. So we just are supposed to assume that the negativity is going to come at us. You know, I would hope people would have more self-control than to shoot negativity at people, especially at the time, in times like this, like we've had, you know. So once I got over all of those old self-esteem issues that I had, I think I've handled myself pretty well on here. It does hurt my feelings sometimes, but I keep talking as if I've, you're right in the room with me. I feel like you all are in the room with me, and I feel like we're all friends, you know? I, I know I have a lot of friends out there, <laughs> but I really feel that. I mean, it's not, I'm not kidding. And those of you I see over and over and over again, I recognize you, and I know your story, and I've gotten to know you, you know, giving you the time to, you know, try to get to know you, even though I can't give the time that I'd like to every single person. I have not... I'm just, no, I just, I just can't, you guys. I wish I could. But please know that, like I always say, when I read your comments, I do read, somebody even said I had gone back and answered their question or something, and somebody says, wow, you really do read every comment. I really do. I even try to go back. Now, if I'm a year or so out, no, of course, I probably am going to miss, if I miss the comment, I'm probably have missed it. <laughs> but, you know, I every now and again, I'll go back and buy, uh, my studio is what they call it, and you can go back and look at all the and look at all the comments that you may have missed that you have not responded to in any way. Whether I haven't given a like or a heart or made a comment back to you, I can find those, you know, in in my studio. So I do try to do that. Now I will say I've been really super busy with this Christmas decorating series, so I'm trying to still do that and be diligent, but. I may miss something. So please, if I've missed a question that you've asked up to this point, um, this is, I'm, I'm a little ahead of myself, you guys. I said that I would, and, but I've been posting videos almost every day. <laughs> so uh, let me see, what else do a video I have to go up between now, between when you'll see this. I've got Candace's wreath and I've got this little Christmas tree over here. Those two videos will have gone up before you see this. So, but up to the to date today is, you know, I'm up on all my questions, but keep asking them and I'll keep answering. <laughs> but anyway, all right, you guys, I'm going to let you go. This is a long one, I know. This one is probably long. So let me go into my final words and then I'm going to grab my camera and we're going to go over here and we're going to take a look at this pork pot roast, pork roast. We did not make a pork roast. We made a pot roast. <laughs> it's been a long day, y'all. I'm a blithering idiot. <laughs> but anyway, but... But Gail, no, I don't feel uncomfortable anymore. There was a time I did, but I don't anymore after I've gone around that mountain about three times to get to that point. But thank you for the question. All righty, you guys. Thank you guys for coming along uh, with me and with us, with Chris and I both, you know, as we did the, the hutch here. That's one more thing done. I don't know what's next in the queue. I really don't. I'll, I'll be working on something in this side of the house, though, for sure. So let's go into some final words and say uh, thank you all so much for stopping in here today. I hope that all is well with everyone. And for those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day. 
making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love you all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Hang on, and I will go and show you the pot roast, and then I'll take one last video of this hutch all done, and maybe a picture of it in the evening. So, turn my necklace around here. Anyway, I'll catch y'all the next day. Love yous. Bye-bye. So, as you can see, this is going to be a lovely dinner for us. Oh, my goodness gracious. I can't wait to sit down. And you don't need anything else. You don't need a salad or any other vegetable. You have it all right here. Lovely. One pot dinner. That's the way we like it. <laughs> all right. So, let's finish up this video. I want to show you I did put both bows that I made somewhere. We'll put the little one over here and actually it looks really cute so i'm gonna take some of my words back it looks really cute here i just hung it on this little believe sign here in my kitchen looks super cute and then the other one the bigger one i put over here on my corner cabinet you can see the gold from here can't you Look how pretty. So wouldn't a bow just out of the gold be gorgeous? Oh my goodness, that would be so pretty. But I put it there and it looks pretty. But anyway, here we go. Things are looking up around here. No trees yet, but uh, big tree will go right there. There's my shoes. That's where I'm going to plant myself in about five minutes. <laughs> Mr. Snowman and the staircase. And on over here we go. I'm not going to point the camera to the left because it is a tragedy over there. <laughs> but here is the hutch. Turn out the light here. You can see the lights. And the Christmas trees on the top. And then I'm not going to open the doors, but I'm just going to show you where I put some blingier florals and those three little Christmas trees. And it looks really pretty. Alrighty, you guys, that's it for this one. <laughs> I'm pooped. Oh, I just put this little guy there. He might stay there, still in this little, little stand. He might just stay there. I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys. <laughs> Y'all take good care of yourselves, and I will catch you soon. Love you bunches. Bye bye.